I think these may be the biggest sweet taters I've ever grown that don't have cracks or splits on them. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a wonderful day. It is Thursday, October 15th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, I wanna show you a nice little surprise that our chickens uncovered in this plot here behind me. Scratch around, see if we can find some more of those nice little surprises. And then we're gonna check on all our cow peas that we have growing behind me here in this plot. So to kind of set the stage here, we planted two rows of Orlean sweet potatoes in this plot back in the summer several weeks ago we were getting close to the maturity date for this variety we started scratching around in here and this is all we found a bunch of stringy looking sweet taters like that and because we've seen this happen before, we knew this was probably a result of too much nitrogen in this plot. This particular no-till plot was just too fertile to be growing sweet potatoes in there. So I said, well, since we got skunked here, we'll just try to make something out of it. And at least we can use those sweet potato leaves to feed the chickens for a week or two. So that's what we did. Since this cool season cover crop right here, which is looking fabulous by the way, isn't quite ready to graze, we thought we'll just let them graze these sweet potato vines, help us clean this up a little bit so we don't have to go in there and manually pull out quite as much vegetation. So we started them out right here, kind of on the edge of those sweet potato hills came down this way then we turned the corner sent them down that way earlier this week and as you can see they have been doing a number on these sweet potato vines they love these things and they've been tearing them up but as i was moving that chicken tractor last week late one afternoon i noticed a big spot of orange here now it's not bright orange anymore but they found a sweet tater on the side of one of those hills and they helped herself. So that made me think, hmm, maybe there are a few in here after all. So then I decided to pull up one of these plants along the middle of the row and I found that right there. Now I didn't find much else underneath that plant, but I did find that one nice one. So that got me thinking, hmm, maybe we didn't get completely skunked here after all. And before I let those chickens graze the top of those sweet potato hills, we might better dig around, pull up some plants and see if we can find a few that's worth saving. Now I'm not gonna go grab the digging fork and dig these to the extent that I would normally dig sweet potatoes because like I said, there's still a bunch of stringy ones out there, but we're gonna pull up some plants here and see what we can find. All right, so I know that plant there is all stringy. I've already pulled that one up. Let's try this one right here. This dirt's pretty soft. Looks like got a bunch of strings right there. Yep, no sweet potatoes in there. Move down to the next plant here. We might actually have something here. It's getting a little better. Still pretty stringy, but I think we can actually eat that one. So maybe as we work along the road here, we'll get a little bit better. There's another real stringy one, but we might can chop that up into some roastable pieces. All right, so we'll keep plugging away here. See if we can find something worth eating. Got another hill right here. There's a decent one right there. I can work with that. More strings there. Yep. Still a lot of stringy ones in here. All right, so I scratched out that first row there and we got a few, not a ton, but maybe enough to take the skunk sign off this plot and just call it whooped instead of skunk. So there's some of them right there. I put the better looking ones over here on the ground. You can see we got some really nice looking sweet taters right there. A few of those have gotten too big. That's one reason why I like this Orleans variety so much is because we usually get a high percentage of what we call number one grade sweet taters that look really nice and uniform. Not all those there do, but several of them are really, really nice. 
So had we not messed things up and planted these sweet potatoes in too fertile a plot, we would have got a lot of these right here as opposed to just getting a few. Now let's dig the second row over there and hopefully we'll get more like this. All right, all right, all right. So that second row still wasn't quite to the level of what we would expect from this variety if we do our job and put them in the right soil conditions, but it was better than that first row. And we've almost got our bucket full there. Just like we did on the first row, I saved some of the bigger, prettier ones. And this little pile got some absolute monsters there really nice looking sweet taters i normally don't like them to get this big but i'll take what i can get at this point and we've still got 10 row foot or so right there to work with see if we can find some more i can't really clear those vines with the chicken tractor in the way but later this afternoon i'll spin it back around right here and then we can dig those last few so i am plum tickled to go from thought we got skunk to actually getting some pretty nice sweet taters out of there. I think these may be the biggest sweet taters I've ever grown that don't have cracks or splits on them. I've probably grown bigger ones in the past, but they looked all gnarly. These are the smoothest, biggest sweet potatoes I've ever grown. And I'm probably gonna need to get a samurai sword to cut these things up because they are absolute monsters. That right here's what you call an all day baker. Wake up in the morning, wrap that one in some tin foil, throw it in the oven, go to work. And when you get home, it'll be ready. Now I'm really curious as to how these got so big without splitting. I guess it could be a variety thing. As I've told you before, from all our trials, this Orleans variety makes the prettiest sweet potatoes of all the varieties we've tried. But it also could have something to do with our plant spacing here. So what we did on these two rows was we put our plants about eight inches apart, maybe a little closer than that. We stacked them in there tight. That way, if we'd got a lot of rain towards the end of their maturity date, they wouldn't blow up and split. So that could have helped as well. I think the eight inch plant spacing worked really well for us. And that plot would have worked even better if we hadn't had so much nitrogen in there. So for this Orleans variety, I think I'm gonna stick with that close plant spacing from here on out. Now one more thing before we check on these cow peas. I know we're a long ways off from anybody thinking about planting sweet potatoes next year, but Steel Plant Company, where we get all our sweet potato slips, does have a new website and they are already taking pre-orders for 2024 shipping. So I've been working on a new website for them for several months now. Just got it finished and launched within the last month. They've got some nice new features on there, including this bundle and save option, where you can save a little bit of money if you purchase more than one variety. So go check them out, still at the same URL, sweetpotatoplant.com. All right, now let's take a look at these beautiful fall cow peas. Now, cow peas are a veggie that we usually have to spray a lot. We can get a lot of aphids on them. We can get that cow pea curculio, which stings up all the peas. But I haven't sprayed these a whole lot. I did spray them a couple times when they were small. Had a lot of white fly pressure on them, but I haven't sprayed them since then. But I have been keeping a close eye on these. I will spray them if I need to. These little peas that are forming here, I don't see any signs of aphids on them. Usually they bunch up along the stems and along these peas when we get them bad. I also don't see any stings on these peas, which tells me that the pea curculio isn't that bad right now. So I haven't seen any of the bad guys out here. I have seen a lot of wasps and a lot of bees, which are hopefully keeping the bad guys under control. So this first row here where we have the Hordenova netting hung from that conduit is the Razorback cow pea, AKA the Calico cow pea. And these got really, really bushy because we planted them thick and didn't thin them. And now they're climbing up that netting like they're supposed to do. So within the next couple weeks, we should see that much foliage down there all the way up to that conduit. And by the looks of these peas, we're still probably about a week, week and a half out from having any that are ready to pick, ready to shell, but it won't be long. And I like what I'm seeing with this variety so far. And then right here, we've got our Chack Bay cow peas. I don't know if y'all can see them because they're kind of tiny, but those native bees are all over these things. Same thing for those over there. I haven't sprayed these in a long, long time, and they're looking like I won't need to spray them, at least for the foreseeable future. Starting to load up with peas all over those plants there. We didn't thin these, 
we just let them grow and I'm glad we didn't thin them because it looks like we're gonna have enough to put in the freezer so one of our viewers old Gilbert that lives in South Louisiana kind of near Cajun B has been sending me pictures of his Chack Bay cow pea harvest I think he's picked his like five times already he's just been loading up with cow peas and I think pretty soon we're gonna be loading up as well so it was great to turn some bad news into some good news with these Orleans sweet potatoes. I guess we just need to let them marinate out there a little longer. And it won't be long before we got some fresh cow peas to pick. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I'll be sure to put our affiliate link for Steel Plant Company in the description below. And if you want to learn more about these two cow pea varieties we've got growing here and watch us plant them, check out this video right here. We'll tell you about these two kind of rare, hard to find varieties and show you how we put the seeds in the ground. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.